everyone, welcome to the Eat Me, Drink Me podcast, where I, Audrey, and my occasional guest will share our personal, supernatural, and mystical experiences with you. Because in a world full of obligation and high expectations, we hope our stories inspire you to follow Holy Spirit as Alice followed the White Rabbit, but into Jesus' Wonderland, where we get to rest in, explore, and celebrate everything that He has made available to us not just in heaven, but here on earth. This is so exciting. I'm so honored to hear about his journey. Thank you for his willingness to share his journey. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And so I am just so thankful that we get to um, talk today, get to know each other more, and just get to share what you've done in his life with other people. May it penetrate every listener's heart and mind. May it confirm things that you're showing them. May it bring them deeper into your love, experiencing your love and overwhelming peace, your glory, your truth. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I'll just start. I'll start with my testimony awesome. and, uh, and talk about my experience with Jesus. And, uh, you know, I look back over my past and Holy Spirit, the rabbits like Holy Spirit, uh, yeah. always, always there, always knocking on our door, always trying to get our attention and ultimately to get us to go down the rabbit hole into I mean, you see, I see the the wound in Jesus' side, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. trying to get into that revelation of, of that rabbit hole. We're in there. He's trying to waken us to see uh, where we're at, where we're located. That's awesome. Yeah, we've always been located there. That's the amazing gospel. Yeah. We were home for... Uh, we ever left, you know, we were home free before we ever fell. Uh, I know that now. I didn't know that then. I mean, I, I didn't grow up in the church, and sometimes I feel like I'm a wild bull in a china cabinet. I, it, ain't, it hasn't worked out for me. Church yeah. hasn't really worked out well for me. And that's okay. I mean, I love the church and, and, and really have had a desire to guard my heart to never get offended. Uh, at the church. Church is beautiful. God's people is beautiful, but we're all lost and we all come out of different uh, delusions. Mm -hmm. the, delusional, the delusional bride, as Baxter Kruger says, um, when God steps into that place, Jesus steps into that place and begins to turn the lights on. And for me, that was a process. Uh, even before I really encountered Jesus or believed in him, there was a part of me that believed, but I didn't know him. And and I it wasn't on my to do list to believe in something I didn't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I I had to be I'm one of those people I had to encounter Jesus to believe in Jesus, you know? Uh and and that's just how that's I just didn't I, I wouldn't believe in something I hadn't encountered. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's good news because he comes and he gives us his faith and he shares his faith with us and wakes us up. And so uh, I tell people that, that don't believe in Jesus all the time. I, I, I wouldn't believe in something I hadn't encountered either. And hopefully that opens up an opportunity to pray. And many times people have experienced Jesus through prayer like that. He, he reveals himself to people in mm -hmm. a powerful way. And, and, and it's amazing those times where... You pray for people and the Spirit of God, their hairs on their body stands up and they feel Holy Spirit. He's real. Yeah. We're, we're honoring heaven on earth we're through the Holy Spirit and sharing in that beautiful heavenly reality that we have woken up to. Uh, Eden's the mindset uh, that we have been restored to. But the Lord, you know, I was on drugs. I had spent from the time I was 16 to I was 27 
I was on drugs. I sold drugs. I ran drugs. And I, I lived in that lifestyle. I didn't grow up in the church, and I really wasn't looking for Jesus. Uh, I, I didn't really believe in him. And if I did, like I said, I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in, you know, playing church or being a part of that community. It just didn't have no, my, didn't have no um, the desire to do that. Yeah. And and um, so I was I was in a real low place in my life, and I would go out to I had I had bought three cars with drug money, and I had a Pathfinder, and I would go out. I, I had people calling me all the time, uh, addicts and people wanting drugs. And so it would get overwhelming a lot and I would have to disappear and turn, disappear and turn off my phone so I could get some sanity Wow! Uh, because I would be pulled in every direction and I would be high and I would have this money in my pocket and people were trying to rob you and people were trying to get this. And I mean, it, all kinds of deceptions coming at you in that lifestyle. And I was in the midst of that. And I would go to this place called pull apart to get away from everyone. And, uh, I would go out there and I was looking at these pathfinders because I was trying to restore my pathfinder. And, uh, I was out there and in one of these pathfinders, uh, up there where the speedometer is and the gauges saw this of Jesus holding this guy up and this guy had a needle in his arm. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. That's a powerful picture. I had never seen that. And that was my first time when I saw it, the rabbit Holy spirit got my attention and it spoke to my world. It spoke to my reality. And I needed that. I needed a real Jesus that could hold me up. Mm -hmm. Uh, in this moment and so i took that card and i set it on my pathfinder uh when i left and i and i rode around for months and i would i would pray jesus if you're real this is who you are i want to know because i i don't want to be in this life i felt trapped in a life i didn't want to be in mm -hmm. uh, i had a hook in my nose and i didn't know any other world i didn't know how to get out of it i didn't know any christians i never heard of charismatic christianity christianity at the time I just didn't know. I didn't yeah. know there was hope. I didn't know there was a way out. I thought I was in too deep. And um, I just didn't know. And so I began to pray and talk to Jesus over that period. And I think I got offended at him because he didn't show up in the way I wanted him to show up. Mm -hmm. And uh, Was that and before you like heard stories of him showing up in people's lives? Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a clue. I mean, I, I, yeah. I didn't have a ear. I didn't have a, I, I wasn't in anybody's world or any kind of world where I knew, I just didn't know. I didn't grow up in the church. Um, I didn't have anyone telling me about any of this supernatural stuff that Jesus could do. It just so you're wasn't just my crying out, speaking out just for anything. Yeah, I saw that picture, and I was like, "I need a Jesus who can who can hold me up, who 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 can save me, get me out of my life, or help me, anything, you know." I think it's so neat hey, that you saw I it. Hey, I wanted a savior. I needed a savior, but I could not save myself. Right. I failed at that. I, I tried to stop doing what I was doing. I just couldn't mm -hmm. have the power to do it. Right. I think it's and neat I, that you saw that in the Pathfinder. <laughs> I know. Is that not crazy? Yeah. It's so awesome. <laughs> so, it's like, you have your Pathfinder, but then, you know, there's this piece that you found in another one that is the path. Anyways, started you on the path. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> to find him. I never thought about that, Audrey, until now. That is, really? It's, it's <laughs> profound and prophetic. And I'm in my little world of darkness with no hope and, and not seeing, just seeing my small little world. And Jesus had the bigger picture all along, all along. And um, <laughs> I'm having to, having to catch myself. You just choked, I just choked up. It's uh, okay. It's good. <laughs> so good. Um. Jesus. Yeah, and 
it was maybe five or six months after that 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 encounter. Oh, uh, I began hearing his voice, but I didn't really know it was his voice. But he was there in my darkness with me, in, in my mm -hmm. deepest my deepest darkness. He was right there, and he was always tender, always loving, always encouraging, never condemning, never "I told you so." None of this wrathful stuff. It was always just. It was always just amazing, graceful, yeah. his voice and who he is and who he is for me and for everybody else. But in my personal testimony, that's that's how he's always come to me. He's just gentle, loving, encouraging. Uh, you're my friend, Brandon. I love you. I'm for you. I believe in you. You can do this. I'm with you. I never leave you. That's how he's always spoken to me. Um, and so I, I, I went to I went to jail. And I detoxed for two weeks. And uh, this guy, this black man named Callahan, came into my cell uh, and he had a Bible. That's all he had. And I looked at his Bible. I remember looking at his Bible and thinking, who is this guy? <laughs> what does he have his Bible for? And so uh, I guess we spent maybe a week in the cell. And this guy, he had read his he read his Bible every day, all day long. And he didn't talk to anyone in the in the block. It was probably 40, 40 inmates in the block in jail. And uh, he uh, he had gotten arrested from an old warrant from about twenty years. And so, in between taking care of that warrant and getting in trouble, you know, he had become a follower of Jesus, and he, he loved Jesus radically and so uh, after a little while from being there i asked him to read me the bible and he took me psalms 23 and he read it to me and i don't think i had ever heard psalms 23 that's how unchurched i was and um uh, he got to the verse where it says the lord prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies and he anoints your head with oil and your cup overflows and I, and I sat there and I said, I, I asked him, I go, what does it mean to anoint somebody? What is that? And uh, he smiled and he said, well, in the book of James, it says, if you call the elders, uh, they will anoint you with oil and your sins will be forgiven. You will be healed and God will raise you up. And I, I sat there and thought for a second. I'm like, I need all that. <laughs> <laughs> I need that bad. I need that real bad. And uh, I said, can can you anoint me? Because when he said elders, I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't know anything about deacon boards or elder boards or whatever. Yeah. I thought elder was someone old, and I'm like, you're 56. <laughs> no, you're on. <laughs> and so I'm like, can you anoint me? He's like, I'm not an elder. I'm like, dude, you're old. You're 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 an elder. And he's like, no, you don't get it. There's elders and deacons in church. He kind of explained that to me then, and laughing, he's laughing at me. And uh, I said, uh, then he was like, well, we don't have any oil. And I had, I had one little thing of shampoo in the cell. That's about all we had: a shampoo and, and a couple Bibles. And uh, I read the back of it and it had all kinds of different kinds of oil in it. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. I'm like, man, there's so much oil in this. We, you think we pray for it, God, to make it holy? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so we, he said, yeah, we'll, we'll do it. And I didn't know what to expect. I said, well, I'm going to read Psalms 23 as a prayer over my life. And when I get to that part, the Lord anoints you with oil. Will you will you anoint me? And he said, Yeah. And I got to that part and he put a cross of shampoo on my forehead. And I didn't know how he was gonna anoint me. Like I, I look I'm looking back and I, we didn't talk that through. It was all happening so fast. Yeah. And when he did, he put that cross on my forehead, all of a sudden the my hair started feeling like they were standing up and I started tingling. And it ran all the way down my body and down my arms and my legs. And I felt like the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit just just touched me. And I was like, oh, I looked at my hands. Some reason I still do that when when the when the Holy Spirit, you feel uh, God's presence. You feel his love. You feel his peace. You feel this electricity. It's like chill bumps on steroids and all of your hair like standing up. And it's the most amazing feeling in the world. Um, and it shook me to my core. And uh, I knew that I knew that I knew. I'm like, this is you, God, because you can feel Jesus. You know, like there's something eternal. There's something about remembering. I didn't just meet Jesus there, but I remembered it who formed me in the womb and who I came from and who I originate out of. And uh, it's like you plug, your mind begins to be plugged back into what's real and what's true. And uh, wow. yeah, it's, it's more awakening is more of remembering mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the rock, which we were cut. Mm -hmm. very the veil is lifted. Yeah. Yeah. That veil <laughs> People call it being born anew, or, uh, but it, it shook me. And you know, it's a scripture. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here because in scripture, Jesus or Apostle Paul, when they would cast out a demon, uh, it said it it came out that very hour. And I was demonized. I mean, I I I had seen the demonic realm, and and I knew I, I knew I, I I knew I was there was something wrong and there was something in me that was foreign. But that made sense. I knew that having any, I knew that. And, um, when that, I had that encounter, the, the buzzard rang and the cell door opened. It opens automatically when it's time to eat. So you're in your cell locked up and then during breakfast or uh, lunch or dinner, they let you out uh, about an hour and a half during each meal. And as soon as that encounter happened, it was time to eat. And so I went out there, I gave my tray away, which is a miracle because you're so hungry, they barely feed mm -hmm. you. And I, I was so shaken to the core uh, that I, I, I went out there and gave my tray away and I sat there and thought about it. And then when they put me back in my cell, uh, I asked my roommate, could I borrow his Bible? And I read the book of Ephesians mm. and I was fighting with the demonic spirit mm. read. And I could feel this going on and, and I could feel Holy spirit leading me to continue to read, just read the scriptures, read the scriptures. And I would, I was, I was stuttering within myself. There was this battle. It, it was this crazy battle. I can't even, I don't, I don't even know how to, use words to explain it. Um, but as soon as I got to the end of Ephesians, it was like it left. And when it left, you know how the prodigal said he came to his right mind in, in the prodigal yeah. story of the prodigal son. I came to my right mind and all of a sudden, uh, I mean, after a decade of being in confusion and being in fear and being in all of this demonic stuff uh, and not being able to see anything. I was lost. You know, that's when we talk about lost. We're lost because we belong. But I was lost in darkness, surrounded by the demonic, and they had built strongholds so powerful in my mind uh, that at that moment when they left, man, I remembered who I was. I remembered Father God. I remembered Jesus. And I had this powerful encounter with Holy Spirit. And I just cried, man. I broke and I cried for an hour almost, you know, uh, just because I come to my right mind. I remembered and and I had this peace in my soul. Uh, and, and, and that's how that's how that's what happened to me. That's how I experienced it. And from that day on, I mean, I, I I went to 15 different schools growing up. I come out of broken families. Uh, mom and dad married and remarried. And uh, so I really didn't have an education and I didn't read. I never had read anything. And from that moment, 
I just had this like desire to read the scriptures. Wow. And that's when, you know, it's, it was su it's supernatural. Jesus shares his anointing with us and his very being, and that gives us desires to do things that we previously didn't have strength or power or the, or the will to do. He gave me that passion to, to read. And I read nonstop uh, four or five months uh, while I was in there. This King James Bible, I mean, I wore this thing was brand new. By the time I got out, it was the, the, the cover of it was worn out. Um, and the uh, Holy Spirit really ministered to me and uh, really just uh, memorized chapters of the Bible uh, and began reading books. And one of the first books I ever read was, it was a book by Bill Johnson, and it was called uh, Shifting Shadows of Supernatural Power. I haven't even heard of that one. It, it's <laughs> amazing I, I think i still have it over here on my bookshelf i guess it was one of their here it is it's uh i still have it this is i think yeah. this is my christian book <laughs> but it, oh, it has chavda he's got some crazy stories yeah julia lauren i guess she authored the book bill johnson's one of it's had three authors Mm -hmm. And it just opened me up to God's supernatural world. But when I encountered Jesus uh, after that night, I began to have these dreams about him. And he came to me in several dreams. And uh, just like it says in the book of Acts that you'll, you'll dream, you'll have visions, you'll prophesy. It just became all real. Yeah. It, it became really real. And, uh, uh, had these amazing encounters, and God just began to build faith in me. That's what it's about. God begins mm -hmm. to build faith and make himself known and make himself real so that we go from faith to faith. And uh, I read that, and after Teen Challenge, I had to get out of my city because I had sold drugs for so long in my city. I knew every big drug dealer and uh, everyone that knew me knew me as someone who had drugs or who they could buy drugs from, or who had some kind of connection to get drugs mm -hmm. in large quantities. So I had, I had to leave my city, and the Lord uh, parted the Red Sea for me to be able to go. It was all pretty amazing stories, uh, especially with the court system, of how he, he, um, he actually, you know, he took over the judges, I'd say. He took over the judges and made a decree on my behalf so that I could leave the state. Wow. <laughs> oh, right, because if you're in under parole, then you can't leave, right? Yeah, I was on probation. The, the, my, I had two probation officers in two different counties, and they said in all their years of being probation officers, they've never seen anything like this. And they said, we know God's with you. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Amazing stories. <laughs> God does what he wants. Uh, <laughs> and he wants to just lavish us with his love, doesn't he? <laughs> and we're learning to see that. We're learning to see how intertwined and involved he is in all and everything about our lives. He, he's always been there. He's always been sharing his life with us and mm -hmm. uh, trying to lead us down that rabbit hole into Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, experiencing Ever. his wonderland, experiencing his kingdom of heaven here and now. It's here. It's all yeah. around us. We've That's... always been it. We just had had eyes to see it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he gives us eyes to see uh, and experience his beautiful kingdom. Taste and see. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and, and so I, I went to Bethel, and that was really amazing, really I went there skeptical and went there looking for miracles, and I saw many. If you go to Bethel and you stay there for two years, you're going to experience some really incredible stuff. Are uh, you going to their school? I went to the, I went to Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry for two years. Okay. That was during old nine, and so that was when go teeth were 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 happening. Mm -hmm. Feathers were showing up all around us, and 
we were seeing glory clouds and and it had have like gold dust shimmering in in the middle of it and gold dust was showing up on people and on our bible on our hands and uh I, I, I mean, I saw crazy. I, I was a Christian a year and a half, and I'm seeing all these crazy miracles. Uh, yeah. But during that time, I had went. John Crowder had moved to Santa Cruz, and uh, I, there's a whole other story. There, there's layers of story uh, in Alice in Wonderland. Uh, during Teen Challenge, I went to a bookstore, and I was I had read this book. This is my first book I read. And I wanted to get a book by Mayhash Shabbat because all these Pentecostals are talking about the baptism of the Spirit and praying in tongues. And that hadn't happened to me yet. I hadn't prayed in tongues, and I wanted to pray in tongues. I mean, I wanted all that Jesus had yeah. to offer. Yeah. And I went to get this book by Mayhash Shabbat called Speaking in Tongues. It was my first outing. Like, you, you have to you stay there maybe two or three months, and then you get to go spend like four hours with your parents and go out to eat. Hmm. And my dad took me to this bookstore. And I went in there to get this book, and I looked down the aisle, and all the books are, set, are, are, are upright like this, but there's one book that's sideways on the shelf. And when I looked at it, uh, I kid you not, it glimmered with light. And I'm like, I'm like, did I just see that? Did that really just happen, or is that in my mind? Am I losing my mind? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> really, like, that book just glowed. <laughs> my whole life nothing like this ever happened all of a sudden i meet jesus and my my, my world starts lighting up with these weird visions and signs <laughs> wonders and yeah and and uh and you should have saw me like i was a bull in the china cabinet because i'm trying to tell all these christians about all this stuff that's going on in my life and i guess i just end up being the weirdo like, i the i don't know what you mean <laughs> i had no clue because i thought well if i'm experiencing it I, I, I've ruined my life. I've failed at everything I've tried to do. Uh, by no means do I do I deserve any of this stuff that's going on. And God's laving his love on me for no reason. And I don't understand it. And I'm thinking, well, if I would have known all this, I would have been a Christian my whole life. And so I'm thinking all the other Christians are experiencing this stuff. And I was just blind to it, you know? Right. That, that's not necessarily the case. No, <laughs> unfortunately. The Bible Belt in Alabama. And so I'm from Texas, so yeah, I, it's kind of similar. A lot of people are preaching that miracles aren't for today. Yeah, yeah. I, so I bump my head a lot, and that yeah. it's that thing. And um, uh, so yeah, I go and I look at this book that had just glowed, and it's John Crowder's book, The New Mystics. Oh, and I'm like. <laughs> And when I grab it, you know, ever since I got anointed with that oil, that same feeling of the Holy Spirit, anytime God's leading me a certain direction, when the rabbit's trying to lead me down the hole, mm -hmm. down the funny <laughs> hole, into Alice in Wonderland, <laughs> it's like I have that anointing come over me. Um, you know, when truth comes forth, I, I get hit and I begin to be like shocked. And when I grabbed that book, I got shocked and all my hairs on my body stood up. And I'm like, I only have enough money for one book. So I had to I had to not get Mayhash Shabbat's book. I never have read it. Uh, but <laughs> I, <laughs> I mean, God, God, just, God just ruined my religion right off the bat. That's so good. Thank God. <laughs> so I read that book. And I called, he was in Georgia at that time, and he had this he had this girl that answered his phone. And when I was at Teen Challenge, they let me work in the office. And I wasn't supposed to use the phone, but I would sneak and do it to call John Crowder's ministry. <laughs> and, and this girl prophesied over me. And um, she read my mail. And it was the first time I had experienced something like that. And so... That's awesome. This 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 is this is going on. Like this is the real deal. And so when I moved to California, we have an op we had opportunities to go see John Crowder preach. And I was at Bethel, and we ha I had some amazing encounters with Heidi Baker coming through, Roland Baker, Randy Clark, Bill Johnson, and and so many other people who are moving in the spirit mm -hmm. and moving in this stuff. And uh, I um. 
go to this Crowder meeting and Ben Dunn, and I I got hit with something that I can't explain. And for, for months, I laughed, and it healed my emotions. And I was intoxicated. I was whacked. Wow. Like, whacked. And, uh, and that cued me in to listen. Well, what's up with this John Crowder dude? Like, Lord, I know you're in it because I just encountered you way more powerfully than I've ever encountered you in my life. And it, it's not going away. <laughs> it's stuff like glue in the season. <laughs> and it's the best most amazing thing in the in the world we're experiencing heaven on earth we're we're experiencing this new wine and experiencing the father son and spirit in ways that are unfathomable and are so amazing and so blissful and i'm out of my mind and everywhere i go it's getting on people you're prophesying you're praying over people there's fruit coming out of it yeah uh, and people are encountering jesus and and I'm encountering Jesus, and I'm this drug dealer, drug addict, messed up, broken, uh, all kinds of stuff, and I'm being like supernaturally healed. You know, when when, when the captive comes back to Zion, laughter fills their mouth, and they're like those who dream again. Mm. And I'm like, this is this is real life, and so. My thing is, is when I encounter the Lord, that's the best thing I've ever experienced. Jesus is the best thing in the world you will ever encounter. And when you experience his love, you know why you're alive. You know why your heart beats. And there's nothing that is better. You know, you, you encounter people who have encountered Jesus around the world. The, the number one fruit or sign or evidence of someone who's encountered Jesus, they're in love. Mm -hmm. they're, oh, and they're obsessed <laughs> and you can't you, you just you just want to talk about Jesus all the time every day and you can't stop you try to stop and you can't <laughs> yeah. you know like you're one of those people <laughs> uh, and that's what we do you like we're just experiencing Jesus because there's nothing else we want to experience anymore mm -hmm. and his divine nature, his anointing, and who he is being shared with us has changed our life. Mm -hmm. We didn't do it. He does it. And, and it's grace. But, you know, being in the charismatic movement, I said, Lord, if you can turn this on, if you can turn the water on, you can keep it running. <laughs> yeah. It's like everybody's theology was leaky pots or refilled refilled <laughs> empty or god's out here open the heavens or everything distanced god from us or yeah. deserts are normal or wildernesses are normal or you know being dry is normal so you can grow or be transformed or be changed or uh, all the language just didn't make sense with what was going on in my world and it was actually attacking the encounter or mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like it was anti-encounter, mm -hmm. but in the name of trying to get another encounter or, you know, begging or being hungry or reaching out or fasting and praying for something, time, distance, and delay, I think is how you would put it. It's the carrot dangling in front of the turtle. And I think sometimes that becomes people's idol of trying to obtain something that they've already yeah. had. Uh, I'm for experiences. I love experiences. And when you start seeing God as the, as the, if you can turn on the water, he can leave it running. As you see him, God that leaves it running, you begin to experience him. Like it's not an intellectual thing we're talking about. Like all of God's in you and we're in all of God. But if you don't experience it, it's no good. It's just a good idea. We, mm -hmm. we want to have these like baptism in the, these baptism in, in the Holy Spirit encounters where we live from that place and we want to dance with God and experience all that who he is. And I know we'll never get there to where we've experienced them all. <laughs> the infinite mystery. <laughs> right, right, right. So my last name's Nix and it rhymes with fix. And, it, and, <laughs> and so 
we, we I, my business, we, we fix stuff. So I've always been fascinated with fixing stuff. And if I, I, I get obsessed, I, I get obsessed. And so when I become a Christian, I wanted to fix it. You know, like if we're if we're walking with Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit and God who created the cosmos is sharing his life and his power and his love, and his mercy, all that he is with us. We should be the most powerful force on the planet moving in love so that his kingdom can be established and everyone can become aware of who he is and, and it can overthrow darkness or whatever, you know, like you, you see it all through scripture. Uh, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth and uh, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven and through Jesus. Uh, we have been brought back into a redeemed union where heaven and earth is redeemed as one man and God is redeemed in, in a redeemed union and we're one. Yeah. It's finished. I just can't take things at face. I had to figure it out, you know, and I'm like, well, what's going on with Christianity? So we figure out Calvinism, Arminianism, Trinitarianism, uh, the East, the West, like we're, I'm still seeking all this information out to figure this thing out so I can see, I want to see, you know, uh, and none of that communication was lining up with my experience in the charismatic movement. And so that's why I queued into John Crowder and that opened the door for Trinitarian theology because I just wanted to walk in God, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't want to like beg and try to find him and chase after him and, he doesn't like, want that either, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to go through all these times of where I wanted to be with my lover, and I couldn't because I was being taught charismatic voodoo, you know? Whoa. So that really helped put language on my experience. And, 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 and when the mind starts being renewed, it's the wineskin. Mm -hmm. Hold the wine. It's amazing. And, and, and so that's, that's heaven on earth is living in the awareness of the Father, Son, and Spirit, experiencing their anointing and living uh, in that place where He changes our desires and He lives through us and we're experiencing Him and having daily fellowship, whether we're working or ministry or uh, just just taking the day off, taking walks. We feel Him. Yeah. And, and, and without that, man, I'm not, without that, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm just not, it didn't work out for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of these strong-willed people who can believe in something I hadn't encountered and live this Christian life of hard works, do all this stuff apart from God in the name of God. That just don't make sense to me. I want to do it with Him. Mm -hmm. So learning about that, putting language around the encounter so that we can live and walk in daily fellowship with the Father, Son, and Spirit. And, uh that's amazing. And so that's kind of been my journey is, is Lord, if you can turn on the water, how can you keep it running? Because the river's always flowing from the temple. We cork it by our dumb idea that, that are called strongholds that, that we're learning to uproot, get out of our way so that we can live in uh, this oneness and experience heaven on earth. And that's what we were created for. Adam, Adam lost it. In the garden, he lost the awareness of it, and I believe it was because of his conscience, uh, because of, of what happened. And Jesus came to restore our conscience and cleanse it so that we could experience family and fellowship, uh, experience him. Adam walked in the cool of the day, but that word cool of the day, it, it implies that Adam hung out with Jesus in the morning, but said goodbye and went and did his thing the rest of the day. And so much of our theology is like that. You know, Jesus is out there. You can hang out with him, but it's not normal to live in the awareness and, and live in an ongoing baptism of the Holy Spirit where you're experiencing God all the time. Yeah, that's um, good. And so it, the, the word cool of the day really should be Adam walked in the spirit with God 24-7, seven days a week. All the time, there was never a time he wasn't aware of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. And he lived life from that place. And in that place, he was taking dominion of the planet. And so we're to take our lives back. Yeah. We're, we're to live in that fellowship 
and we would take back our lives and be fruitful families who operate in love, healthy families who raise healthy kids, knowing the family of God because we're living the family of God because we're face to face with God. Mm-hmm. And that's going <laughs> my wife, and we hope it just overtakes our kids. Yeah. Um, and that they become aware of this divine presence. Because when you taste Jesus, there's nothing better. Like, it don't matter where you're at. When you experience Jesus, you know why you're alive. Yeah. And it's for him. It, it's for him. It's this intimacy that goes way deeper than a marriage or uh, being a parent. Like, you're just wired for it. Yeah, and you all know? of those relationships are you know, these multifaceted ways that we get to get like a taste of what, of how good that even could be. You know, if you have like a healthy marriage, you have, um, you know, love for your family and are loved back. It's just a small taste of the bigger picture. You know, like you're talking about chasing after the encounter all the time, rather than, um, realizing that, you know, that he's just always pouring the water out and he's just always with us, right? Um, a revelation that God gave me, um, and this might be a little awkward for some, I don't know, but it is really powerful for me, you know, being a married woman. To me, it's like, you know, so me and my husband, we're married, we're to- together all the time. And even if we were um, you know, he was off doing something for a few days and, and I stayed home. We're still connected. We're still married. And there's nothing that I doubt about his love for me. And he doesn't doubt anything about my love for him. Um, we talk to each other in that however way we need to talk to each other when he's over there and I'm here or when we're going about our day and we're just talking about things. But then there's also the times where it gets really intimate, you know, it gets really intimate. You're experiencing each other in this passionate way that's only between the two of you and that ignites this bliss, right? And so it's like with God, we're married to God and also, and so to always be seeking after these encounters would be like in a marriage acting as if you don't have that intimacy with your spouse all the time, or like you're not with them all the time, you know? And I don't know if that, that's coming out right. <laughs> no, it's good. It's, it's clear. Yeah. It's, it's clear. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, yeah, he just wants us to really receive that, He's with us all the time, no matter what. Just like in a a marriage, you are together with one another all the time, no matter what. And you get to experience each other in different ways. You know, sometimes with your spouse, it's good to just be in each other's presence, but you don't have to feel bad about not having this long, in-depth conversation with them, but you are just being with each other. You know, it's like the Father just wants to be with us sometimes. We don't always have to pour our heart out or um, pray for three hours, you know, just to get His approval. Like, He likes to just enjoy us and wants us to just be okay with enjoying Him, too. Yeah. That's so good. So good. That's that's what I, you know, I've learned two things about God. He can't sin and He can't leave us. Uh but it's not that he's stuck with us. He loves us so much. He wants to be with us. And he made it where it's impossible for us to flee or get away from him. Yeah. They love us. And so it's a beautiful sacrament. Marriage is a beautiful sacrament that points to uh, not just my wife or you and your husband becoming one flesh, but that represents us being one flesh with Jesus Mm -hmm. through his incarnation uh, those who are joining the Lord, one spirit with the Lord, and s- were seated right there face to face with their Father. Yeah. In, in His love, as the target of His affection, uh, we're His most expensive real estate. That's what my <laughs> wife and I all the time. But there, it's, another, it's another layer. There's layers and layers and mm-hmm. layers of affection. You know, God is our Father. Holy Spirit is like our mother. I, I love the fin- mm-hmm. fin- side of God. We call her she, you know. Yeah. Uh, she she reveals the most 
beautiful mother to us. And Jesus is our brother, the friend that sticks and a brother. And they fulfill our needs. Uh, they will meet all of our needs according to uh, his riches and glory. And mm-hmm. <laughs> we're, lear- we're learning that, that we're learning to receive only from them and flow in them and, 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 and exist in that fellowship and it, and it works. Yeah. It's a family. Yeah. And we have lapses in our identity. That's what we call it. We're like, there's, there's moments where we listen to the wrong voice. Uh, we fall into certain traps occasionally, uh, and, and forget who we are. And so we're here to remind each other of who we are and we're sharing this life with each other. And Jesus is turning on more lights and more lights all the time. And reminding us, I know I needed, my orphan mindset needed a lot of reminding and the truth needed to be hammered into my mind. We're, mm-hmm. we're, we're being renewed to see this and experience this and fellowship in, in this beautiful heavenly reality uh, where I believe we have been restored to Eden. It's a mindset uh, and that we are being restored in our mind mm-hmm. to see what it is as we are part of a beautiful family, a heavenly family. And we want to we want to experience that family and them sharing their life with us. It's it's beautiful. This gospel is amazing. He does it all. He did it. He does it. He supplies it. Shares himself with us and all that he is. Jesus, uh, his peace, his goodness, his faith, his love, his mercy, his obedience, his surrender, and 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 that overtakes us. And it's this beautiful. It's a beautiful dance. Uh, Baxter Kruger says it. Uh, to where we're 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 experiencing that, and that's what we want to experience, and we look to, and um, be that kind of family on the earth. Yeah. And and walk through it, and grow through it, and love through the the lapses in our identity we have with each other and ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. learn to hear and 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 be led by God's voice only. Uh, that, that, that's so beautiful. I mean, you probably heard it talked about. God's restored our innocence, and we're pure, holy, and innocent uh, without reproach and accusation, face to face with our Father, and He's forgotten everything as far as the East is from the West, and that that's been crucified. The ego, the I, the independent self, and now we're one with Father, Son, and Spirit. Therefore, we can't take credit for anything. We don't have. <laughs> And we don't have the right to judge ourselves anymore. We'll be judging them. And they're, and so we're pure, holy, innocent, blameless. So anything in my life or comes into my mind that's not holy, pure, innocent, or blameless, it doesn't originate in me. It originates in darkness. Mm-hmm. And that's how we've been learning to navigate. That is learning to hear his voice and, and, and not another. Mm-hmm. Um that makes sense. Yeah, um, it's coming to mind as a few things he's just been highlighting to me lately, like how, um, I mean, every we hear in the Christian, you know, world, we talk a lot about how God is a good father, but I don't know, the other day, just, there was this freshness to it, and how, like, how I want to train up my kids in the way that they should go to to learn how to love well and to learn, um, you know, how to commune with God and and know that He is their Father too, and just seeing how like a gentle father um, trains their children, you know, and loves their children, shows them grace when they make mistakes, and so the highlight was on how often Christians beat themselves up for letting down God, but. He is not holding it against them, just like we know that our children are being trained up. And so, we show them grace when they're learning and they make a mistake, you know, or if they just outright do something that is rude or mean or selfish, you know, it's like we don't, we're not totally devastated by it and we don't make them an outcast. Um, We don't reject them. We love them because we know that their brain is still developing, they're still learning and growing in their identity, they're learning and being convinced and persuaded of our love for them. And so, anyways, it, it that's something that I knew, but there was just this freshness to it the other day, uh, focusing yeah. on our, our mistakes. And 
he just loves being a good dad. Like he loves the opportunity to just teach us and, and allow us to grow and experience his love. So, you know, so many times when people make a mistake or they sin, um, they feel condemnation and they think that God is like going to meet them with condemnation and judgment. Um, but really like a loving father, he doesn't, loving father doesn't do that. You know, yeah. he meets his children with grace and forgiveness and identity and, and comfort. Right. Who he is. He's always done that with, with me. I mean, in my experience with the Lord and his voice, he's always come to me in that very nature in, in the ways you're talking about. And you know, we, we, we see that with him. And as we begin to experience and see that with him, we become whole and we're able to be that image and that likeness to our kids. It's all sacraments. It's all, <laughs> it's all amazing uh, pictures painted of, of, of true reality of who he is. And yes, it, it, it's amazing. Yeah. It's the mirror. The mirror effect. <laughs> the mirror effect, yes. Yeah. We look we look in the mirror and we don't have to walk away and forget who we are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what better man or woman that we are. It's so good. Yeah. Well cool. Um yeah. I've really enjoyed everything you shared with us today. Yeah, I'm honored. I'm honored that you uh reached out to me and I'm honored that you allowed me to tell my story and share, share my walk and, um, where we're at with the Lord. It's so amazing. And, uh, it's amazing where you're at, uh, in this thing too. And so it's beautiful. It's amazing. Yes. It's, beautiful. it's glorious. And, uh, it's a, uh, an experience that words, that, that words can't define. Yeah, it has to be experienced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> he's he's more, um, he's more than our words. <laughs> it's taught, not taught. There it is. Yeah, it's, it's got to be taught and not taught. It's <laughs> um, well, we're coming up on an hour. Will you? Um, would you mind just praying for those that are listening, just releasing, you know, your heart and just whatever bubbles up out of you. <laughs> yes, yes, Father, we love you so much. Thank you that you're helping us uh, see you more clearly. Lord, that you're so intertwined in our lives from the time we come out of the womb until the time we wake up and we encounter you and we see you and we come into truth. Uh, Lord, you've always been there. You've always been the same. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, we haven't changed your mind, but you are a redeeming genius at helping us change our mind to see what truly is, to see what see with your eyes. And Lord, thank you for this podcast, Audrey, her family, uh, Lord, for her heart and how she reveals you to the world. She does it amazingly. And uh, Lord, thank you for the analogy of Alice in Wonderland. I think it's awesome. Uh, metaphor uh, of how you work in our lives, of how uh, you, Holy Spirit, lead us into Jesus to discover uh, all that he is, to discover ourselves, to discover Father, uh, to discover you, Jesus, to discover you, Holy Spirit, and to discover others uh, in the light of your affection and how you know us, how you've known us from before the foundation of the world. So thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we love you, and, and Father, I just pray that uh, through hearing these podcasts that many thousands and thousands and thousands of people, uh, they see, they begin to see that this will be a veil-removing uh, ministry uh, to many uh, in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. That is awesome. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Removing the veil. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks everyone for listening. Be sure to visit eatmedrinkmepodcast.net to join the conversation, to subscribe for emails, and leave a review. We are also now open for PayPal and Patreon donations. We are so, so thankful for your contributions, your listening support, sharing with others, and most of all, your prayers. 
Thank you guys so much and bless you all. Yeah!